that's random. I think that's beautiful. Hi, YouTube. It's back. And my friend Vicky. <laughs> that's a really bad look, Vic. From Tasmania. He's been visiting me for a week. And we have been working on some slow stitching together. Vicky has never... Have you ever done any of this kind of thing before? Never, ever. Um, more refined, accurate, unpick um, it redo it, unpick it, redo it for it to be perfect. Absolutely. And Vicky and I were talking to another lady, Vicky, yesterday, who was telling me that she thought that I had the skill base to do very refined work, which I think probably I do have that skill base, but it's not really what brings me a lot of joy and, and um, it does, it's not, it's not what I'm after really. Um, I can admire that work. It is beautiful. I saw some of her work and it was really stunning, really fine work. Wasn't it Vic? It was divine. But um, it's also not me. Is it you? No, not me. So, but Vicky's mum taught me or she didn't teach me. She saw me sewing and said, young lady, I will give you some lessons because you are doing things wrong. Um, and I was doing a lot of things wrong. And Rosie is a very particular sewer. She was a seamstress by trade and she does beautiful work and she likes it all to be perfect. And Vicky's been taught by a mum to be that way. Whereas I've kind of learnt those ways and then gone off on my own tangent. And I guess learning from Fleur, like at the workshops that I've done and like through my own kind of quilt making, I have decided that perfection is not the thing that I'm after. Like I'm always aiming for a beautiful result and I'm always trying to do my best work, but the work doesn't have to be perfect for me to love it. And I think that's something that we have been working on with our slow stitching, right Vic? Totally, and I'm actually embracing it and enjoying being a little bit um, mismashy. And yeah, we're mismashers, that's what we are. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to turn you around and show you what Vicky and I have been working on and explain a bit about how we put the books that we've made together because our books um, have different covers and that meant that we, I mean, they obviously have different covers, like you've got one cover and I've got one cover, but the way they needed to be constructed was slightly different because of the covers that we were using. And I'm also going to show you a little bit of that bigger stitching project that I'm doing called um, I See You and I Love You because lots of people asked about how I was going to attach, like make sure that the edges didn't fray, etc., etc., of the work. And I can show you a little bit of that. So I hope you enjoy being here with us and we'll talk you through what we're doing. So I just wanted to start, I forgot to say that Vicky and I have been making projects together since I turned 40. We went away, she and I, to Vietnam for my 40th birthday, which is almost 10 years ago. ago. And we made some pin cushions there. And ever since then, we've kind of liked to do some projects, like different but similar, same kind of, same, same but different, um, as they would say to us in Vietnam at the time totally. when we wanted something. They're like, same, same, but different. Anyway, Vicky had seen this that I was working on, or like that I made, and she said, I might like to do something like that. And she also saw this work, which we'll come back to, and she said, oh, I'd quite like to do something like that. And then she got here and she said, there's no way I'm doing anything like that. That is way too much time and too big for me. So what we decided to do when she was here was make some little needle books. And we have got, this one here is Vicky's and this one's mine. And we were just, Vicky did bring a couple of things with her, but mostly we were playing with some scraps and bits and pieces that I had. Um, and a couple of parcels actually arrived while she was here and we added bits and pieces from there. And you saw that the both of us went and looked for some doilies where we washed them and a couple of those have made them in here as well. So I'm going to start with Vicky's. Would you like to talk us through your piece of work, Vicky? Uh, it's, um, I'm loving embracing putting new things and new stitches in. So there's a little bit of um, blanket stitch along here and 
this is really wonky. Um, intentionally wonky though, intentionally right? Intentionally wonky, whereas uh, on the inside, this was uh, more, I suppose, refined and, you know, I unpicked it three or four times the first couple of stitches because it wasn't even, so. And what did I say? It, Try not to make it even. Yeah, so I've, this was probably the first part of my blanket stitching and this is how I've progressed to um, embracing the wonk embracing the wonk so or mishmash I, i'm loving it so it's quite an eclectic piece i've put lots of um lovely little pieces in it's probably more a pink and blue hue with a bit of green and now i'm just adding some embellishments um to the other bits and pieces and it's definitely not um accurate in terms of uh, measurements or cutting but it's perfect in my mind for the look that I'm after and just even the tiniest little pieces um, little off cuts that are fitting in and um, little edge bits that you know normally just throw in the bin but well, don't throw anything in the bin you will be surprised what you can use and like I'm pretty sure that's a little bit that got cut off when you cut that um, and look at that so cute so I'm just flipping you through Vicky's book, but we're going to come back. And she was just working on this stitch here before while we were talking. I'm going to come back. She's got lots and lots and lots of pages because I really tried to tell her to put so many in, didn't I? And, you know, making little pockets at the back so you can put and, things in. Yeah, and your, your tiny rotary cutter fitted in there really beautifully. Okay, so this piece that is the backing for Vicky's project book that was a pre-made piece of something. We don't really know what it was. Um, it looks like it could have been like maybe a pelmet for a curtain. It's a very cute fabric, but it meant that Vicky had to construct that by, she couldn't hide her stitches of attaching her pages um, within the covers because the cover was already together. So you can see here, um, that Vicky's stitches where she has joined all those pages that we flipped through before inside are visible on the outside. And anybody that's worried about seeing visible stitches, this is part of the glory of this kind of thing. It's just, you know, it's mark making on fabric and it doesn't need to be perfect to be beautiful. Having said that, I think there is a little bit of an art to it. It's not just crazy stitching, you are considering what you're doing. And then this is a fabric that I was using and I said to Vicky, look at this little bit and she decided she'd stick that on there. And she's still got, well, she's put a pin in there actually, but she's done some beautiful neat stitches. And even here, she was still embracing the wonk at this point. She made sure she hid all her raw edges on this piece by just stitching it inside out and then seaming it through the middle. Um, Whereas when I encouraged her to put some more stuff in, like this one I really like, it's just a tiny little bit of feed sack. Did you find that in the, like, was that just, or did Millie cut that off what she was doing? Um, and she's just stitched it onto the edge of that piece of wool and wool, felted wool, and it looks so sweet. So here is the center of Vicky's book here and you can see that line of stitching here that also came through to the outside so in the middle she's just got lots she's probably not going to use these for putting needles in it's more just kind of flipping through and enjoying and you know part of what we're doing when we're stitching is making memories and I, I hope that like you know it's going to bring back memories of the week that we spent together swimming in the sea and slow stitching as much as possible she, Vicky did have a turn at Shop Girl as well. She quite enjoyed that. Um, certainly for me, that's what I'm going to think of when I play with or use mine. Does that make sense to you, Vicky? Is that kind of what you Absolutely. feel? And it's uh, using these treasured little pieces of fabric that you may ordinarily go, oh, there's a stain on that and it's of no use anymore, but there's always a little piece that you can snip out and use and add somewhere and it brings me great joy to look at the fine artwork and cleverness of bygone um seamstresses and crafters yeah and like it like even here this 
probably because it shrunk differently. The back to the front is kind of all kind of creased up. Like this is not Vicky's work. This is some previous maker that's done this, but I actually think it adds quite a nice element to the back cover I there. It. I love it. Yeah. So, and Vicky found this tiny little teacup, piece of teacups, which was a piece of fabric that I'd once given her. And I'd made my daughter, Emma, who's 19, um, a top out of that. And then she had this little scrap and she's added it in because it was a project we did together. Now, we have both chosen to tie ours with these apron strings that we that came from an apron that I had and I cut up to use in my Edie quilt. And I was always going to use this fabric for something. I might've unstitched the seam that was on here from the apron to put it together. But because there were two, it was really nice to form that matching thing, um, matching connection between the works. So Vicky's is bigger than mine, partly because she was working with a you know, just a pre-made piece of work. And partly, I just don't think there's an actual template for these. Like if the size of them should be dictated, I guess, by the fabrics that you're working with and the textiles rather than, oh, it needs to be six inches by four inches, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Okay, so here's mine. And mine is made differently to Vicky's because I put together my outer and it meant when I seamed down the middle, which is actually under this doily and you can, can't really see it anymore, but there is a seam under there. It didn't have to come through to the outer of mine because it could be hidden between the front and the lining of the cover. And I think I explained that I'd put some interfacing into mine because it was a bit too floppy um it's quite a nice way it's very soft still and very malleable and i like that so on the outer of mine i used a little bit of a cross stitch piece of work that i had cut into for a quilt recently and i had that left over and then a bit of doily has been added and this bit of doily that's come over here and i've added some stitches to came from a doily that I had attached to the back cover. I haven't quite finished mine, but I'm very upset. Vicky and her daughter need to go home tomorrow. And so we're showing you now because we will have run out of time otherwise. So I'm gonna add some little bits on here and this little doily on here. Vicky mentioned before that she thought that sometimes she would have thrown out these bits of fabric. Now, this is a really water damaged bit of fabric, and I think it actually adds a very beautiful element to the work. You can tell it's a vintage textile. I don't think there's anything wrong with being able to tell it's a vintage textile. And I just think it adds that next element to your work. So I've got I think this is the same piece of stitched work and drawn thread work that I used in my scrappy pouches that I made for my diary. I just add a little bit of a doily that I have been using in many, many things. And I've got little bits of it left. And in the past, I definitely would have thrown that out. But I can see so much potential from that small piece of leftover doily. So if you wanted to do anything like this, one little doily can do multiple things in your work and that's pretty cool, I think. So we have, Vicky and I have used some of the same fabrics to get quite a different result. I quite like this doily just in the middle, just because that's some more of that really water damaged textile. It's got some staining on the lace, but that lace is just, I don't know, it's delicious. It's so pretty. And I love thinking about the makers that have made this work in the past and how it's come to me over the years, like how old this might be and how many hands it's passed through and been saved by. And, you know, I've rescued it from wherever to include it. Little little snippets of beautiful fabrics that are left over. You can add some, I'm just gonna zoom in here. That zoomed out. Um, so just so that you can 
see, I've added some little cream cross stitches here because I just thought it gave it a nice little element. And it also covered up some of the stitching from me joining in the pocket that's on the other page. Now you are going to get some stitches coming from one page to the next. I actually think that adds to it in most cases. Um, I don't know why I chose to do that there, but I think it's very sweet. And then let's zoom you back out. So I've got a little pocket made out of the same or half the doily that Vicky had. I've done some, I guess, mark making to make some flowers. I'm picking up the same green that's in that fabric that we've used for the ties. This was an old tea, cozy, a very fine one that, you know, I've used and Vicky's used. This was a little bit of fabric left over from those. Um, it was gifted to me by Vintage Cotton Fabric and it was left over from when I made my zipper pouches that went in between... Um, in my diary, tiny bit of doily left. And I just really like the little cross stitches here. They're very fine. And I thought, why not join it in? And sorry, I should say at this point, some of my pages, when I joined it, so this, this felt page here was a double width. So it goes across the middle and is seamed down the middle. Whereas this one here is just a single bit and got caught by that center seam, there's no matching bit on the other side. So you can, if you've got smaller bits, you can add those in, you can add in bigger ones. You you can really do whatever you like. Um, and really it only needs to appeal to you. But because it's scrappy, I don't think the stitches need to be neat. And I think actually them not being neat adds to your work. And when I say not neat, you're still aiming for a lovely result. You're just not um, being a perfectionist, I guess, about your work. Like this one, when I've stitched on, it's kind of come off, like come down. Um, I actually quite like that. I think that looks very sweet. This little doily just, it's the same fabric. This is just a bit that didn't have any of that embroidery work on it. It's just so gorgeous. And then over here, I've got some more wool felt that, you know, I can put needles in. Just some little embroidery from, you know, another maker. And it's, I don't know, it's nearly finished. It brings me, like looking at this, it brings me a lot of joy. And I do generally need things to be useful for me to make them. And it's one of the things I love most about quilting is that a quilt... It not only holds memories and it holds the time that you spent making it and, you know, the fabrics that were gifted to you or found or whatever they might be, but it is a practical practical piece of um, work that can be used to keep those you love warm. And that's important to me in my making that I'm not making a lot of things that don't form any useful purpose. So the fact that I will use this to put my needles in and potentially because I've put some pockets in it, it might actually hold, you know, not just the needles, maybe some EPP and that might be in my bag is very satisfying to me. Um, I also just wanted to show you a couple of fabrics that you might not have considered to use in your work that I think are really useful. Like, a doily like this is very lovely to cut up. It's got not only a crochet edge, it's got small bits of um, stitching that you can add in. So you could cut that in half or you could just use a little portion of it and both would be beautiful. This was gifted to me. Vicky brought this for me um, and she found it in the tip shop. So just look in all the places, but this isn't I would say it's antique, not just vintage, but a little collar and it's just got some beautiful divine work in it. And I guess when I add this to something, it will always remind me of her and that she brought it for me from Tasmania and it's now residing with me and that some maker has made that at some point. 
Sometimes people think the white stitching isn't so lovely, but I actually adore this. This is probably a hanky, I would say. It's got some drawn thread work, which I really like. It's got a lovely edge on it. And it's just got those simple daisies that would add to, you know, whatever you include that in. The tray cloths are really useful for quilts because they're big enough to cut up into sizable chunks to include in a quilt. But you can also include smaller bits into a project like the needle book. And if you are cutting what, something like this up for a quilt, you will probably be left with lots of this edging. So don't throw it out. It's perfect for including in a little book or potentially into a pin cushion. Just wanted to show you this one. Vicky and I found this together and we couldn't agree on who was having it. We were very civilized until it came to this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to cut this one in half because it was so pretty. I think the vibrancy of the colours, the blue stitching is very lovely. It's a very beautiful blue. And for me, the green of the leaves is really lovely as well. Having said that, I wasn't able to include it into my book because it's too big for my book. So it would make a beautiful outer of another project though. So potentially you'll see it there. This one, again, too big for inclusion in a book, but I may put that into a quilt at some time. And if I do, I will probably be left with bits and pieces around the edge, which I will include at a later date in something else. Hold on to all the little pieces. And the little snippets of fabric as well. These are just some other kinds of doilies that can be quite lovely. If you come across the, the coloured ones, the vintage colours tend to be just stunning. So they're worth picking up so that you can use those in your work. I like the very fine doilies. These look lovely as well. Oh, and then I just put this one here because most people would look at this and think, oh, what a shame, let's throw it out. Now, I wouldn't include this fabric in a quilt because it's so fine and it has started wearing in so many places. Either moth has eaten that sometime in the past or it's just worn away. But this stitching here is stunning. And you could definitely use those bits and pieces in your work. So I just wanted to show you a couple of things. And these are all ones that I picked up with Vicky while she's been up here over the last week. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a cough. Um, except for that one, which she brought with me. Vicky, you're gonna have to talk for a second because I need to have a sip of tea. What are you gonna say? Um, it's just the exquisite work that you can just, you know, do some fussy cutting to take it out and add it. Um, and I was really surprised just to find this, you know, amongst the junk at the um, tip shop, which is a little fine for me. I was like doing a little happy dance. We do do happy dances when we find good stuff. Okay. And then back onto this bigger project that I'm working on. So... I think when I showed you last time, I was working up here. I have joined in a few bits and pieces. Um, I have stitched down this doily properly and I really like that my base fabric for this is the edge of a tablecloth. So I'm getting a double layering of lace here where there's the lace of the tablecloth with the lace of the doily over the top and that adds that extra element to it. And then I've added that little rose that I had and I thought it looked like a rosette. So I put that little piece of fabric on it like a ribbon and I think that's lovely. But let's zoom back in, which I think I know how to do now, yes. Um, and I just wanted to show you on this bit here, which is not finished. You can see that this flower here, I've started stitching some of the blues, but not finished them all. So you can see that I've stitched in some of the edges like this with just like a little, I'm not even sure what that's called, like a little straight stitch to join the edge in. I've joined some with weaving here. Here I've done a less kind of close together straight stitch. Um, the fabric is held on by the edge stitching, but also, 
you know, I've stitched over this flower and then I've outlined the leaves here. But I've also, on the background, there's these little white daisies, which I've stitched on this one already. And then you can see here that I've used almost like a little canther stitch, but a regular, so you might call it a seed stitch. I think you get to do whatever you want, but to hold my fabric in place, and it kind of almost looks like it's in that little daisy that was somebody else's work, some beautiful maker in the past, is almost in the rain there. And then I've done that, like this one here, um, I folded up the green fabric and just stitched it down like that because I haven't finished with this bit and I'll probably trim that back. I wanted to have that drawn thread work showing through there. And so again, I've done some weaving here and some straight stitches to join it. So there's some of the ways that I'm joining the edges of my fabric. Over here, this leaf here. So I added in this little pet, this leaf, partly because I like the blue background, partly because I like the green of it. And I have just stitched that down with the black pearl cotton, actually black embroidered floss there. And it's not heavily stitched, like most of it is unstitched. And then on the little blue around it, I've done tiny little invisible stitches to hold that together. <coughs> Excuse me, I keep getting frogs in my throat when I'm talking. Anyway, so that's where I'm up to, to with this one. I haven't done a lot of it this week because I've been working on this book and just, you know, spending time with my friend and her daughter and my family and enjoying summer. We've done lots of swimming in the sea and swimming in the pool and also some shop time. So I hope this inspires somebody to kind of think about these tiny scraps differently or, you know, a work that they, a piece of fabric that they perhaps thought was beyond kind of, you know, soaking or repair it can be beautiful in your work and I think it's worth using. So hopefully I'll see you back here soon. Thank you for being here. Bye.